Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Jim Wu. Welcome to the PyTouch Live tutorial number nine. In this tutorial, I will introduce uh, the PyHouse newly added support for medical imaging data. So uh, first of all, I want to introduce the development team that include uh, Chao Qi, me, Patrick, Jen, and Professor Sun. And we want to also acknowledge the following external collaborator here um, from CMU, Acubia, relative and Relativity. Um, so first of all, I want to give a recap for those who might be new to PyHouse. So period, in the previous tutorials, we introduced PyHouse five-stage machine learning pipeline that includes um, from uh, the range from the processing the data set, defining the healthcare task for that data set, and select a certain deep learning model to handle that task, and then use the trainer to train the selected model on that task specific data set, and eventually, uh, we're going to do the model inference and evaluation to check the model performance after training. So uh, so the newly added image pipeline actually exactly follows this five-stage pipeline. Let me give you, uh, let me just guide you through this step by step. Uh, first of all, just as a general overview of this medical imaging data, it plays a critical role in diagnosing and treating illness in real-world clinical practice. There are many different kinds of medical images, ranging from, ranging from X-ray, CT scan, to other different modalities such as MRI and ultrasound or PET scan. And recently, with the development of deep learning, and also thanks to this uh, increasing, non, increasing volume of medical imaging data, the deep learning algorithms are revolutionizing the ways those medical images are analyzed. Typically, we um, machine learning researchers or clinical practitioners, we, practitioners, we utilize a trained machine learning models to do many different downstream tasks, ranging from medical imaging classification, segmentation, report generation, or other different tasks like patient retrieval or report retrieval. So in this tutorial, I will focus uh, on a more concrete example using this chest x-ray data. So uh, chest x-ray data essentially provides a detailed view of the chest, including the lungs, heart, bones, and other surrounding structures. It is, it can be, it is very often used to diagnose a variety of conditions, such as phenomena, um, lung cancer, heart failure, um, cardiomegaly, et cetera. And in this tutorial, I focus on a, the concrete task we're gonna focus on is this chest x-ray classification task. So we will be using a data set from Cargo and do this uh, four class classification. That is given each sample is a X-ray image from a certain patient and each image is further classified into one of the four classes ranging from COVID, long pecti, normal and this viral phenomena. And so let's now uh, go to the uh, five step high house pipeline. So the first step is to do the data processing. That is, we're gonna load the data uh, from, uh, from the data set into a unified API. So here, what you need to do is very easy. You're gonna import the corresponding data set. Here, the data set we are using is this COVID-19 X-ray data set. And you just need to tell the data loader where the data is located. That is this root path here. So inside this root data set folder, there can be many files, like this image files and other supporting files. But most importantly, we're gonna have this metadata JSON file. So if we take a look at this metadata JSON file, we can see uh, each, each line in this file represents one sample, and each sample is represented as, this, uh, as a dictionary structure, where the key contains a pass, that is this relative pass to the corresponding image in the disk, and a label, that is the label information for this sample, as well as some other uh, information that you want to store for this sample. It can be um, this URL where it shows, where, where it shows the, uh, the website that this image is obtained, or it can be other supporting information like the patient demographic information or the uh, medical report for this image. So given this data structure, um, our uh, data set class, we automatically load this metadata information into the data set. So uh, let's show, let's go to the code and show a, and check out some concrete example. Uh, let me enlarge this. So here uh, in this uh, Jupyter notebook, 
we let's first perform this first step that is loading the data set. As I mentioned earlier, uh, here is the root that contains all the files for this data set. And inside this root, as I mentioned earlier, the most important file is this metadata JSON file, where each line in this file contains all the information about this sample. And what you need, what you need to do to load this data is essentially calling the corresponding uh, image data set and then just tell the data set where the root uh, folder is. As you can see here, after loading the data set, we can print out some statistics, such as um, uh, the number of images. And here we can also see that uh, each patient in this image is at, essentially contains one X-ray image, and we also store the corresponding label and other meta information here. So that's how we load the metadata into this unified API. Just as an uh, important notice here, uh, here uh, we the loading the loading the image from the disks is not happening here. It's happening later when we actually doing the training pipeline. Uh, this is to accommodate really large image data sets where you don't want to load the entire data sets into the memory. So that's the first step. In the second step, we're gonna define some healthcare task using uh, for this specific data set. So this is done exactly um, as the EHR clinical prediction modeling by calling this set task function. So here we set a task to be this COVID-19 classification function. And inside the function is actually very simple. Right now we didn't do anything. We just return the original patient we got. Um, the logic here is very simple. So this data set is kind of already uh, well processed where each patient we only have one sample and each sample contains a uh, one of the four label we gotta, we gotta classify. So essentially here we don't need to do any um, pre-processing or uh, corporate selection. So for this task, we just return the patient as is. But uh, in some other case, more advanced cases, you might want to do some corporate selection. For example, um, the data, each patient may contain multiple X-ray images, including the front images, the back or the lateral. And for your model to, and in your task, you may also want, you may only want to focus on the frontal images. So you can do the corporate selection here. So, uh, let me show the code for this second step. So here we will import this COVID classification function, which essentially just return the input patient as is. And we also uh, initialize this torch vision transform function. And here we do just very simple. We will resize the image to two to four times two to four, convert it to a tensor and do this uh, simple normalization. This is very standard for uh, the, all those image, uh, image uh, imaging tasks, all those vision tasks. And after, after we uh, set a task, we can access each sample in the data set using this, uh, using this uh, PyTorch uh, indexing. For example, here, we just access the, the, the zeros index sample in this data set. As you can see here is a dictionary whose keys include the image itself, the label, as well as some other meta information um, to support uh, that you might want to use in the, in the in more advanced model. And next, I show some data statistic in this data set. Uh, that's the number of samples in each of the classes. As you can see, uh, normal, normal class contains the most number of samples, while this right of phenomena contains the least. And here I plot uh, one example image per class, uh, as you can see here. So uh, the last uh, thing we want to do in this second step is perform this string validation task split. Because this data set doesn't provide an official train validation test split, we just split it randomly by patients. We split it into um, 80, 10, 10 for training, validation, and testing. After that, we just get a data loader for each, uh, the, for each of the data set. So this is very standard for all kinds of deep learning tasks. And let's go back to the slide. So here, just I just showcased um, the, a, a sample, a concrete sample after we set a task. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we have each sample is a dictionary, which contains the label key and the image tensor. And thirdly, we're gonna select the model for this task. Previously, as a recap, we for um, clinical predictive modeling on EHR data, how we define the model is we're gonna um, tell the model which data set we are using by setting this data set equals to samples. And then we're gonna tell the model what are the features in this case, uh, this model is doing this mortality prediction as indicated by this label key. 
and the features we are using are the conditions, procedure, and the medication medical codes. And since this model is doing mortality prediction, we set it to binary classification mode. And for imaging data, we, the API is actually the same. So as you can see here, we load the ResNet model, this classic model for uh, X-ray classification. And the first few arguments are actually the same. We tell the model which data set we are using and what is the feature that is this image tensor and what is the key that is this label as shown here in this sample. And the, and the task we want to do is multicast classification. So that's why we set the mode to multicast. And after that, I just did these two arguments are the model specific arguments. So here for ResNet, we want to select the number of layers. Here, I just set it to 18 and whether we're gonna use pre-train or not. So this, uh, this, this underlying model framework is implemented, is, uh, is borrowed from torturation. So if we set pre-train pre to true, it will load the pre-train weights on the ImageNet dataset. And let's go to the code to see how we did this. So as you can see here, it's step three. Um, that's exactly the same code I just showed in the slide. And after we initialize the model, we can print out the model structure. That is this ResNet structure. It has um, it, it has uh, 18 layers. And the final FC layer is already changed to accommodate our specific task. That is this output feature is set to four. And after we initialize the model, we want to do the model training and evaluation. For this part, we use exactly the same API as all the previous EHR or biosignal tasks. Um, that is, we're gonna initialize this PyHouse trainer and pass the model to the trainer, uh, as well as the tra training data set loader, validation data set loader, and some hyperparameters, such as the number of epochs we want to train and whatever metric we want to monitor during the training process. And this trainer will automatically do uh, save the best as well as the last model weights and uh, save all this log information into this log.txt file. And we can go to the code to see how we did this. So here we initialize this trainer, this PyHouse trainer, and it will initialize the model and as well as pass it to uh, GPU. And then uh, here, I first, since we load a pre-trained model on ImageNet, I first evaluate the pre-trained model performance. As you can see, I we can first we can look at its accuracy because this is a multicast classification. It's getting a 0.32 accuracy on this four cast classification. And then we will do this training. Um, due to the time limitation, I only train in for one epoch, and we monitor the validation accuracy score. So um, the, this trainer will automatically log all those information in the log file as well as show it in the console. That include the batch, some hyperparameters like batch size optimizer, as well as the training process. So after the training process, the the trainer will automatically load the best model uh, based on the validation uh, accuracy score. Uh, that's the monitor metric we set here. And after training, after training, we're gonna do the final step, this evaluation step. We're gonna here. I just print out the fine tuned model performance. As you can see, it increased a lot. Uh, compared to the pre-trained model performance, I think from kind of 30% to this 88%. And to, to further see some like detailed model performance, here we show this uh, confusion matrix uh, where um, the uh, each row represents the true, uh, the number of images that belongs to the, uh, that belongs, whose true class belongs to the corresponding row label. And each column corresponds to the predicted label um, from our model. So here, uh, as you can see, I think this task is relatively um, easy and the model can capture some um, signal even if we only train for one epoch. That's the end for this five stage pipeline. And lastly, I'm, I'm gonna summarize some like ongoing um, items that we are working on uh, for this, especially for this modality thing and also some to do's that we want to call, just call for open contribution. So uh, right now we support uh, the EHR medical codes, uh, biosignal and imaging. And currently we are adding the support for the text modality. And also we try to, we want to unify those different modalities into a, uh, into a uh, unifying framework. Uh, so this won't affect the user experience because the API should remain uh, mostly the same, but the underlying, in terms of the underlying framework, we want to use a more uh, integrated one. And a code for contribution is, for those already added modality, 
um, I think uh, we want we want to encourage everyone um, to just add more data sets, more tasks, and mod and as well as models for uh, those already added modalities. Um, here um, we show some resources uh, if you you want to learn more about PyHealth, and um, the recording will be uploaded to our YouTube channel AI for Health. Uh, you can check out or share with your classmates or friends later. Um, thank you, everyone. That's the end of my presentation.